It's a pleasure to be allowed to speak about the teach NOAC trial, treatment of intracerebral hemorrhage in patients on non-vitamin K oral anticoagulants with tranexamic acids. The background of the study was that the rate of intracerebral hemorrhage on patients on novel oral anticoagulants is about of 0.1 to 0.2 percent per year. With increasing NOAC use, there may be an increasing proportion of NOAC-associated intracerebral hemorrhage. Outcome of NOAC-associated intracerebral hemorrhage has a high mortality of about at least 25 or even more death and unfavorable outcome with disability up to more than 50%. There is at the moment, no evidence-based treatments for NOAC-associated intracerebral hemorrhage. And hematoma expansion is a potential therapeutic target for intracerebral hemorrhage. Hemorrhage expansion rate in NOACs is associated in about 40%. And tranexamic acid is an antifibrinolytic drug potentially limiting hematoma expansion in non-NOAC associated intracerebral hemorrhage. That's results from one of the large clinical trials. <clears throat> the aim was to assess the efficacy and safety of tranexamic acid in NOAC associated intracerebral hemorrhage. The main hypothesis, tranexamic acid reduces hematoma expansion in NOAC associated intracranial hemorrhage. It was a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial at Swiss, six Swiss stroke centers, and it was re registered at tri clinical trial goals. Inclusion criteria were patients with acute intracerebral hemorrhage that were be treated within 12 hours of symptom onset. It was important to have a prior treatment with any of the NOACs that were are available in Switzerland at least, apixaban, dabigatran, edoxaban, and rivaroxaban. And the last intake within the last 48 hours and or proven NOAC activity on coagulation acids, age more than 18 years. There were some exclusion criteria, severe pre-existing disability, secondary intracerebral hemorrhage, Glasgow coma score less than five, planned neurosurgical hematoma evacuation within the next 24 hours, or patients with pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, and so on. The intervention was a randomization, one-to-one, -to, -one, to intravenous tranexamic acid or magic placebo, in addition to standard medical care. Primary outcome, hematoma expansion, defined as hematoma volume increase by either 33% or more than 6 milliliter on follow-up imaging within 24 hours. So it was a surrogate marker as we did follow-up imaging, mainly with CT. Secondary outcomes, symptomatic hematoma expansion defined as hematoma expansion with neurological deterioration, absolute hematoma volume change at 24 hours, ordinal modified ranking score, in-hospital death, death within 90 days, major thromboembolic events within 90 days, and neurosurgical intervention necessary up to two days. So in the secondary outcomes, we have included also clinical aspects. The statistical analysis was pre-specified. Pre it uses the intention to treat principle Missing outcome data on hematoma expansion imputed, assuming worst possible outcome and uh, appropriate regression analysis adjusted for baseline hematoma volume was applied. Sample size calculation was up to 109 patients to detect a significant effect on the primary outcome, assuming hematoma expansion rate of 54% with placebo and half this means 27% with tranexamic acid with 80% power and alpha of 0.05. The study terminated early 
due to exhausted funding before reaching the target sample size. So finally, in the flowchart, you see that there were 31 patients with placebo treatment and 32 patients with tranexamic acid that were included in the intention to treat population. So there were from all 67 randomized patients. Here you see the baseline characteristics, what shows that baselines were well balanced. I will not show these all, but it was very well balanced overall. And here you see the primary outcome. Hematoma expansion was counted in placebo in 45% and the tranexamic acid in 47%. This means a p-value of almost one. So there was no meaningful measure of uh, avoidance of hematoma expansion with the tranexamic acid in comparison to placebo. What about the secondary outcomes that were clinical in some part? And you see here that was also on the ordinal modified ranking scale, almost no difference between the subgroups with the different values for modified ranking scale. Here you see the box plot of absolute hematoma volume change between placebo and tranexamic acid. And you see the variation is a little bit smaller in the tranexamic acid, but actually there's no significant difference. And here you see the shift analysis for modified ranking scale, who visualizes that there were almost a little bit more people dead, but not significantly in the tranexamic acid group. Major thromboembolic events. We had deep vein thrombosis in three patients with pul or pulmonary embolism and myocardial infarction in two patients with tranexamic acid. Conclusion in patients with NOAC associated intracerebral hemorrhage, we found no evidence that tranexamic acid prevents hematoma expansion, but it appeared to be safe. Here, the acknowledgement, all people working on this trial and also with the respective centers here on the right side of the screen. Thank you.